Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any intention of eating meat from the grocery store over the next year or so, I highly recommend that you go ahead and buy it now and stock up that freezer because it's not looking good for the world's protein meat supply right now. This from Smithfield in the US, which is owned by China, it's going to be devastating. One of the country's largest pork processing facilities is closing, and that is indefinitely. Smithfield announced today that the Sioux Falls, South Dakota facility will remain closed until further notice. We are temporarily closing it, just like these temporary medical martial law that we'll institute until things get back to normal. That's not going to happen. The plant is one of the largest pork processing facilities in the U.S., representing 4-5% to of total U.S. pork production just stopped. It supplies nearly 130 million servings of food per week, that is 18 million meals per day that are no longer being produced and served up from the United States, employing 3,700 people. More than 550 independent family farms supply this plant. Quote, the closure of this facility, combined with a growing list of other protein plants, is pushing our country perilously close to the edge in terms of our meat supply. It is impossible to keep our grocery stores stocked if plants aren't running. Also, these facility closures will have severe and almost certainly disastrous repercussions for many other people in the supply chain. First and foremost, the nation's livestock farmers. These farmer ranchers have nowhere to send their animals. And ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly the problem. If you think of the supply chain as a factory moving things forward, then when Smithfield down the line stops processing, then the pigs that are growing up and being fed earlier in the line have nowhere to go. This creates, as we'd read previously, significant animal welfare troubles, meaning there's more animals coming in, there's no food to feed the animals that we weren't get ready to, we weren't able to get rid of. There's just a it's a it's a cluster problem everywhere and it cascades throughout the supply chain. Uh, Reuters is covering this as well. The biggest pork world's biggest pork producer is shutting off, like we said, four to five percent of hog production, pushing us perilously close to the edge. And, um, you know, there were a number of other things that were harrowing today, and we'll talk about a few of them, but this really needs to be discussed. I'm Christian, and this is the Ice Age Farmer channel. And when we saw a mountain of squash coming from the beaches of Florida, because producers there are unable to find markets for their product, the restaurants are shut down, the schools are shut down, and their contracts weren't able to deliver on them. And so this is backing them up. Obviously, that's going to cause huge financial stress on those producers, but it's really not going to be a huge shock to the supply chain. This is just a temporary misallocation of those resources, given that we've we've shut down those markets. But um, but the, the meat situation is different. And so that is not as disturbing. Even the lines of 60,000 people in the equivalent of a bread line for the soup kitchen in Manhattan today, and long lines, of course, of cars in San Antonio. We've seen lines that are almost like the Great Depression, only 2020 version. These scenes today were harrowing. And so too are these warnings that we're going to be having mid-April, late April, winter storms, almost record cold temperatures that are going to cause, according to USDA's chief meteorologist, billions of dollars in damage this year, potentially, based on the fact that it did so last time in 2007 and 2017. This would also cause planting delays over the next two to three weeks. Still not as bad as last year, but worth mentioning. Each of these things would be hugely noteworthy independently. But what's really driving, you know, the Florida, I should have mentioned, those are thousands of acres worth of fruits and vegetables being plowed over or left to rot into the fields. Um, This is just like the same thing we're seeing with 3.7 million gallons of milk being dumped by dairy farmers all, all over the nation every day. And we'd warned that this would be the same as well for meat packers if processors didn't come back online. And indeed, now that especially as more and more of these are, are going offline, pure chaos is erupting in the meat supply chain. Indeed, I received this video from an anonymous uh, Northwest Iowa resident today who caught this large poultry operation on video dumping dead chickens out of their 
poultry house onto flatbed trucks. So there's a line of trucks receiving dead chickens. Surely they're going off to go bury them. We can say that with some certainty because it's been happening around the world. Just for a bit of perspective there. And just to be perfectly clear, ladies and gentlemen, you are looking at the machine that feeds society shutting down. This is a controlled demolition of our food supply. We knew this situation in Sioux Falls was developing because only a few days ago they had identified this as a hot spot, according to the South Dakota Department of Health. And Smithfield was connected to a lot of the a lot of the cases up there. So this case to shut down meat production had been ramping up gradually over time. And sure enough, like I said yesterday, the governor actually reached out and said, we'd really like to request that you just shut down your meat production until further notice. A temporary shutdown with no specified end date. This does build upon the fact that other meat plants around the country have been shutting down. From uh, Reuters here, quote, reduced meat output from the shutdowns threatens to tighten supplies of certain products at a time when demand is rising at grocery stores. Tyson shut down a hog slaughterhouse in Columbus Junction, Iowa. That's 2% of our total slaughtering capacity. National Beef said it suspended cattle slaughtering at uh, Tama, Iowa. These are unprecedented times for the industry. And JBS also had halted operations at a beef plant in Suderton, Pennsylvania. All of these shutdowns mean that there is a glut of meat, right? As Chris Van Beek puts it, what are we going to do with those 200,000 pigs? Producers are going to go broke without any place to sell their pigs or their poultry or their beef. They're going to be forced to euthanize their animals since we can't empty out the barns. This is not, this is, this is a significant problem. In fact, in his words, most small producers only work with one plant, so this is going to be a first-class disaster for Northwest Iowa. It's unbelievable. And as I said, stepping back a second, this is the case around the world. We've been seeing this same situation play out. We saw in China, coronavirus fears forced China into mass chicken coal with 100 million young chickens slaughtered due to the fact that they couldn't move, that there was a shutdown. They couldn't move animal feed around their country to keep the operations running. So they were forced just to kill off the, the chickens and dump them just like we're seeing in Northwest Iowa right now. Uh, again, in India, same sort of a situation. Social media rumors on WhatsApp linking chickens to coronavirus literally crashed the market in a matter of days there. Uh, costing the entire poultry market 1.6 billion rupees a day. We can read down here that uh, the barrage of WhatsApp forwards warning against poultry consumption only got worse over time. The warnings against diseased chicken became more dire. There were pictures and videos until finally farmers, ranchers who had been selling their chickens for uh, for 80 rupees each are now forced to sell them for like 5 to 10 rupees each. Basically a complete collapse in the poultry market, wiping out these people. Uh, and these are all small farm, you know, subsistence level farms uh, for the most part there. And so they're wiped out off the ramp. Globally, we're seeing protein production decimated right now. And farmers, here again, he drove his birds, dug a hole and buried them. Although he later deny doing that because it's against the law. But this is the scene that's playing out. You see that this is not a one-time thing in some field in Iowa. This is what happens when you can't feed your birds or when you can't get them to market or when the slaughterhouse shuts down and your pigs are already full weight. And at that point, they keep putting on weight even faster. You can't afford to feed them. What are you going to do? You're going to be forced to euthanize them and throw them in a hole. It's just a terrible situation. And, you know, to really drive this home... You can't just spin production back up. I've also been hearing from um, other folks that Tyson has been calling off all of their laying hens right now. And if those hens aren't there to lay the eggs to create the layers for next year, then egg production... We're just... We're watching all of our protein production be systematically dismantled right now. And of course, this was the plan. There are better ways to do this than completely shutting down the food production for the entire country. You could have shifts come in, clean between them. You know, there are ways you could work this out. But that's not the goal. 
The goal is to shut down the engine that feeds society and then to use the ensuing food scarcity to take even tighter totalitarian control over you and over the food supply and over everything. And we're seeing this play out. Obviously, this is a big pharma, Bill Gates-sponsored uh, end run around the Constitution in the United States. There's a, a, a lot of things need to remain out of scope for this video to be effective, but all of those things are absolutely at play within our food supply as well. Bird flus playing out in China, and now that's actually happening in here again in the US. The USDA has just confirmed a highly pathogenic avian influenza. Whether or not that's just a cover for the fact that they're going to have to cull off much of the, the poultry supply, it's hard to say. No bird flu was reported in Iowa where we saw those birds being dumped out of the side of that operation. So that can't be the end. They would be required to report that. So we know that's not the case. And then just to get a, a bit of perspective here, when you look at the US and China down here is the, in green, and then India in yellow, those are the one, three, and four producers of chickens in the world. And all of them are having, as we just saw, hundreds of millions of chickens thrown to the wayside right now. They're being offlined. That leaves Brazil as the number two. Uh, and they have already been picking up a bit of the slack over last year. This is from last year, April. First shipment of Brazilian chicken to India in a year when the world is already facing a shortage of meat protein. Please note that was the case before the virus, before this current insanity. We were already talking about global protein shortages. It just wasn't reaching the retail market yet. And indeed, during this coronavirus escalating, Brazil is winning over new food markets because everyone else is killing their birds and their hogs and their cows. But that was the plan. And so too is it the plan to put fake lab-grown meat on your plate. Remember Wired Magazine? Fake meat will be lab-grown meat is coming whether you like it or not was their headline. Um, here from Ag Funder News, we see that even in this massive recession, the greatest depression ever, things are worse, you know, the Fed is printing money to, to, to cover everything and bail out everything, even amidst this financial wreckage and massive layoffs, somehow these lab-grown meat companies are still able to secure massive rounds. Uh, this one, Kale United pulling down 350,000 euros in a single day to fund their somehow that money is still flowing, even while everything else is shutting down. And you have to ask yourself, why is that happening? How are those things still moving forward? Well, it's because that's the plan. Textured, here's from the mirror.co.uk, pushing that agenda. Textured lab meat made from cow muscle cells could see the closure of abattoirs, which is slaughterhouses. Scientists stumbled over the development. Oh, we just happened to fancy that look at the we just happened to figure it out when we were growing human muscle tissue for grafting we had no intention of adopting the technique to fast food and if you believe that i have a bridge to sell you textured meat made from cow muscle cells has been created in a lab in an advance that could bring us closer to shutting our abattoirs and here you see the woman at the israel institute of technology responsible for this of course that's bollocks we've been hearing uh since lord birkenhead a hundred years ago about how they were going to get rid of animal agriculture and uh, move to la cell cultured meat that they're calling clean meat. It's disgusting. This is a long-standing plan and they are seizing on this opportunity now. Never let the crisis go to waste. They are not. They are going for the cashless, meatless, transhumanist society and they're doing it now. And uh, it's also worth mentioning that Michigan has joined Vermont in banning the seed, the sale of seeds, there is no rational explanation for why you would want to cut people off from seeds unless you are trying to preclude them from securing their own food supply, from growing their own food. This is why it's important for us all to be growing food, saving the seeds, sharing those seeds, teaching people around us about what's going on with this attack on our freedoms and on our food sovereignty and uh, making sure that other people around us start to get the message and grow their own food as well and use regenerative practices. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I have this, this, this idea right now. All of these things are playing out and certainly there has been a drastic disturbance in the force. Everyone's patterns have been broken. But I want to point out that it was those patterns, those daily, the, the daily grind, the things that we, well, I, once I work through my 
credit card loans or whatever it is, whatever people were, were stuck in their patterns doing, all of that has been shaken up now. And what that means is that we have an opportunity to get people to, to really step into themselves and take on new patterns, new behaviors that they already knew they should be doing. I would suggest, especially when the, within the, the critically thinking truth community, that we all knew GMO was bad for you. We knew about the Terminator seeds. We knew Big Pharma was trying to poison us. But how many of us actually started growing our own food and growing herbs in a garden to replace those toxic medicines, um, raising our own animals to replace those toxic grain-fed animals. There were opportunities, but many of us were trapped by the debt or the job or whatever it was. That's not the case, suddenly, for a lot of people. And I have this idea that we as a as, as a human species are, are now, after being exposed to each other on the internet, are now like a super saturated solution. We all know about these regenerative solutions, about permaculture. We all know how to do things better and work with our local communities. And now that all of our patterns have been broken up, it's just up to a few of us, like you and me, to start doing those things in our communities. And the whole solution will just come into focus will just fall into place the powers that be would love nothing more now that they've shaken the the, the whole th- system up than to impose their new revamped totalitarian new world order that's their goal order through chaos but if we because we already know the solutions here if we enable ourselves and, and empower the people around us with knowledge to start doing these things as well to live regeneratively then i think there's a chance We can, like a super saturated solution, crystallize into a much better form of society. One where we don't seed control over our food systems, over our energy systems, over our health to a centralized totalitarian regime. That is the wrong direction to move. And and we know the right direction to move. It's just up, again, to you and me to get out there and do it in our local communities. Be the change. Now more than ever, be the change that you want to see because people are ready for it and they're just looking around for that one person to show them how. Let's go do great things and welcome those people to join us. Please find my work on iceagefarmer.com and support this broadcast if you are able to. Patreon.com slash iceagefarmer. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching and please spread the word. This is the time for us to make that difference. Let's do it.